hi guys welcome back to my channel and as you can see from the title of this video i'm going to be debunking some nigerian i don't know if this is african in, in, in or this applies to other african countries but nigerian myths that i've debunked since i had this baby the last eight weeks so if you'd like to know more definitely keep watching she's on my thigh so as always if you're in her cool or you know giggle or cry maybe just please bear with me and yeah let's just get right into the video okay so the number one one i think was i heard when i was pregnant it was actually my mom that said that when i rolled my eyes so far back so that day she was talking to me and she was like what was i doing i was like i'm chopping okra i wanted to make like okra soup or okra i call it okra okra soup so so i was chopping it and she was just like be careful, you don't take too much okra. I said, what happened? He said, ah, if you take too much okra, your baby, she may start him. Um, she'll be drilling a lot. You guys, I rolled my eyes so far back. I was just like, oh. I couldn't even believe what I was hearing. I'm like, mommy, please say it again. As I just wanted to like indulge her. She was like, ah, just say, if you take too much okra, like your baby will be drilling a lot. So she said it to me, but mama, that all living. I was like, what is the correlation? She was like, ah, my be no old. She was like, ah, that, that's what she knows, who, you know, superstitions and myths. And I'm just like, it's not true. There's no scientific explanation that if you eat something that is slimy, your babies will be drool. Babies drool normally, you know? Babies drool. How they drool is just depending on the way, if maybe, I don't know, they just drool. They drool according to their own body physiology. So that's, that is such a big myth that it's not true. So please. Don't believe that. If anyone told you that, enjoy your okra. I ate a lot of them. Ariru doesn't drool a lot. She drools like the way the baby drools normally so far. So that's that. So yeah, that's the number one myth. Second one is, they say when you're pregnant, don't walk under the sun. That evil spirits will then enter into your baby. That one is just stupid, you know. So I'm not even going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, what's the English word? I'm not going to give it too much airtime on my channel because over here, we don't believe such. We are walking in dominion. When the Bible says we should go into the world and have dominion, it's talking about dominion of the air, of the sea, of everything. So when you're pregnant, you need lots of exercise. You need to walk around. I walked, walked, walked. I know evil spirit entered me. And no, they, it's my body's even the Lord's temple. There's no place for such spirits. So that's another myth. And even if you're not a believer, logically, it doesn't even make any sense. So that's okay. So yeah, another strange myth that I've heard, or I heard, or you probably have heard as well in the Nigerian community, is that. You should put a pin, a safety pin on your belly button or on your dress, not on the belly button, pardon me, on your dress but around the belly button area that it wards off evil spirits. I don't know what's with Nigerian and evil spirits or Nigerians and evil spirits. Nothing like the evil spirit I wanted to catch you that did not catch you when you were single, did not catch you when you go married, did not catch you all your life. It's now when you want to give birth to catch you. Okay, so even when you give birth to the baby, the evil spirit that wants to catch you or that wants to attack you, <laughs> pardon my dress of work, who told you that I can't still attack you when the baby is here? You know, so let's just that's just bollocks. So the only person that can be kept is the one that God keeps. So if you like, put pain from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Put padlocks everywhere. If you are not, you know, under the mercies of God, or God is not allowing His protection over you, anything can happen to you. I, you are you are a prey to the enemy. But if the Lord is watching over you, you know who can? You know when they see the blood, they pass over you. So thank God for the blood of Jesus over our lives. So. Nothing like that. That's just a stupid myth. It doesn't make any sense. And any evil spirit that needs to see safety pin or a safety pin can ward off, it probably doesn't even have any power. You can as well just slap the evil spirit. <laughs> so that's just a myth and it's not true. Now, away from demons, I remember that when I first gave birth to Ariri and then I was hearing about the Nigerian bath that they need to stretch the baby's arm, they need to, you know, stretch the baby's leg, pull the baby's arm to the back. And I'm like, why do they do all of this thing? Throw the baby up. You know, they said, ah, that, that means that the baby will be fearless in life. I said, it's a good thing. They said, like, the baby's going to be fearless in life. That if you throw the baby, the baby... And I'm just like, hmm. Okay, let me be logical a bit. All the skydivers in the world, all the people that do explore, explorative adventures, people that go down the ocean. How many Nigerians have you put in here, please? I'm not saying that they are not Nigerians, but calculate it. People that go bungee jumping. People, how many Nigerians? So all of them that did not do that kind of bath for. Why are they, why are they, why are they fearless? It's, it's just, I think it's just a culture. I think maybe I, I would see the wisdom is, and beside that in the sense of when you're bathing baby and you're, you know, train the baby up. Maybe 
when the baby is being thrown or the baby will not be so like um, jittery because they are used to it but I don't even think that's necessary like why would you be throwing a baby or baby that is just born what if the baby has a concussion or the blood rushes the baby say I know they've been doing it sorry sweetie they've been doing it all these years and probably nothing has happened but you know I just think it's unnecessary practice but if you like I let them throw your baby back a baby that would not, like now for instance me and my husband they both had the bath for us me I'm the adventurer so my husband doesn't like heights me I, I could care less I'm the swimmer He's very scared in water oh well not very scared but he doesn't really like water so these are some of the things that it's, it's not it's not a one size fits all it's, it doesn't make any sense to me to me to me please don't come for me so please to me that's another myth that i don't think is true and doesn't make any sense that's to me another myth that i've heard is that when your baby's having hiccups you put a thread you cut a thread from your shawl and put on the baby's head you know, to stop now before i go on i want you to know that with myths and you know superstitions whatever you believe in will work for you whatever you believe in will seem like it's just like people that believe in this nonsense what do they call it horoscopes if you believe that your life is controlled by the sun and astrology it's what, that's what you begin to see like it will begin because that's power in there's that that's power there's life in the tongue there's life and death in the tongue so whoever likes to feast on it will definitely eat its fruits so i'm going to put the scripture here my baby, when I first gave birth to her, I noticed that she, when I fed her and then I don't burp her properly, she started, she used to have hiccups. And then I was talking to one of my friends on the phone, she was like, ah, Tosi, I know that you know you said this is a new thing, why don't you try that? The thing works, that you just put a thread and put it on top of the air. I said, first of all, if you just leave your baby and she's having hiccups, don't give her water, don't give her breast milk. After a few minutes, it will, it will go by itself. So I'm sure when you put it on the head, except that as soon as you place the thread on the head, it immediately stops. Then I know that okay, there's something with maybe the static energy from the thread that would you know shock the baby and then the baby will stop. But that's not been the case. Even when you place the thread on the baby's head, you need to wait a while. So it's just nature taking its course. What I found that works for Ariri is that when I feed her and I burp her properly, she doesn't have hiccups. But when I don't do it very well, or I, I feed her and I lay her on her back, she begins to have the hiccups. So I mean with an adult as well, you would you would think that you know drinking water just kind of helps or lets it lets it pass. So I find out that when I breastfeed her, it, I just find that when I breastfeed her, it helps a bit. Another thing that someone told me to try was lemon, right? If you put a lemon on their tongue, because it's so sad, it shocks the baby that the hiccup stops completely. Now, I didn't think this true. The first time I actually, um, I didn't even research it. She told me that it works, that she used lemon drops, not actual lemon. So lemon drops, like squeezed out lemon drops and then put it on her baby's tongue. So I went to the store, I bought the lemon drops, I used the fire, she just spoiled her face and she, the hiccups continued. I was like, okay, maybe the one I bought is still. So I actually had actual lemons at home. So your homegirl, I cut the lemons and then I put a drop on Ariri's mouth. And this is the worst decision I probably shouldn't have. She went into such a, she, she, I was so scared. I thought maybe she was going to begin to gasp for air or something. Or she was going to go into like an, a, I don't know, like a frenzy. It was just too much and then when i started to research they were like no that it's just too much soreness for a baby so it, yes it did stop because it shocked her so much it deceived her brain and then the hiccups stopped but it's i don't think it's safe i won't encourage it like what if the baby like chokes or i don't know it's just, i just what if the baby has an allergy so i said to myself i would never do it again so that was one of the things that's like a learning curve for me i've also learned as well so now when i don't do it properly i just give her breast milk and i breastfeed her and then i find out that it subsides faster or i just leave her like today I left her and then she was fine so that's another myth that i know no thread works if you can give me a a database logical wise explanation in the comment box how thread solves hiccups i'll be more than happy to hear your opinion so that's so, it. another myth that i can't even believe that people actually believe this like it's the most unintelligent myth out of everything is that if you are a pregnant um person and you crush your legs right <laughs> i won't feel very stupid sharing this <laughs> if you if you're a pregnant person and you crush your leg and someone crosses over you without saying excuse me and you move your leg so you crush your leg and then the person crosses over you instead of like you moving your leg for the person to pass your baby will look like the person fine comes up with these things like please i need to know it's like the person that was thinking oh let me start gaze and then i just come up with some ridiculous theory that i'm sure god would be like oh, what kind of stupidities and the thing is my people perish for the lack of understanding according to the bible people believe so so many things especially when someone is pregnant 
I don't know how the person that crushed your leg, how their genes is just going to automatically, you know, enter into your belly and then your baby's going to start looking like them. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And I can't even believe that people actually believe this and run with this. So, yeah, it's not true. A million people can, in fact, a cow can cross over your leg and then your baby is not going to look like a cow. So, please, don't, nobody should, be, that's just stupid. So, that's, it's just, as I can't even, yeah. That's another stupid myth or debunking a myth out of all the myths that I've heard concerning pregnancy and giving birth and babies. Yeah. Now, the last one is a bit controversial, but I'm still going to share anyway because I don't see any sense in it. It's that when you give birth to a baby and then you cut the umbilical cord, you need to put like um, methylated spirits on it. Now, in the African culture, they do that a lot. I even think that my dad even told me that back in the days, they would actually burn it, like they'll put like a knife. A knife on a candle and then they'll be putting on the baby's baby's belly button every night which I just think is just so cruel but I think they didn't know better that was the culture and practice then so definitely probably that's why they did that but nowadays I know that among the Nigerian culture they still do that so if you have a new baby you know how the cord is clamped and then they said if you don't if they, they claim the claim is or the theory is if you don't put methylated spirits on it it's not going to heal or it's going to help it in healing now, methylated spirit is actually just methyl. It's alcohol. It's used for burns and cuts and bruises just to disinfect the area. It's just to clean the surface, to disinfect it, to be sure that it doesn't get infected. That's it. I would understand the logic, but your navel and umbilical cord sites, the belly body, the abdominal navel, it's not an injury. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like it's 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 just it just fell off. It just needs to fall off. And once it falls off, if you're careful enough, you don't need to put anything. It's not going to get infected. The baby is really small. You're in the house. You're not using dirty water. Well, maybe people maybe because I mean, if they're in remote areas or poor areas of Nigeria, maybe that's where the, the wisdom came from. But the, the the theory that is going to help the baby have a small belly button, I just don't buy that. I don't believe in it. The midwife specifically told me. She said, do not put anything on it. She said she knows that we Nigerians would love to put that. Don't put anything on it. My friend here, I asked her if they used it on her baby. She said, nope. And her baby's belly button. Sorry, sweetie. She's just a bit hungry. And her baby's belly button is just fine. Like, my friend here, I asked her. I said, did you use anything on your baby's belly button? She said, nope. She didn't put any methylated spray. She just let it fall off. And that's it. And then, so, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Please let me know which ones you guys have heard. You can put them in the description box below or in the comment box below. Those were the myths that I heard when I was. I'm sure there are more, but I just didn't want this video to be too long talking about myths. Things that are not true. And yeah, and I found out that none of them make any sense to me. They are not logical. And you guys, even as believers, I think God has given us brain and intellect to 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 discern and debunk and you know when people tell you things and please don't fight with your parents or your loved ones or your older relatives when it's just say thank you ma she is your child is you that you know what you still do for the child after or do to the child after or what you do to yourself in terms of maybe food pinning things on your belly don't go under the sun just okay thank you so much ma there's no need educating some of them because they are stuck in their ways and it's what they've been doing they they say your rabble call it a, 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 a balai like they met it there so they're continuing it for their own children as well so yeah i mean up to a few years ago, people didn't even used to um, express milk into bottles. It's just our generation that we do a lot of that. They'll tell you it's not the same. Girl, story for another day. So yes, um, that's that. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, let me know in the comment box which of the myths that you've heard before and any other one that you've heard that I didn't mention in this video. And yeah, make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, and you leave a comment. Yeah, till next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.